In this video, I want to explain what we mean by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, otherwise referred to as the unique factorization theorem. Now, these two titles, these two theorems, uh, sound quite daunting, especially when you call it the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay? Um, but you may well have met it already, referred to as writing a number as a product of its prime factors. Okay, so if you haven't met that, then that's fine too. Okay, I will explain what it is and how we're going to work with it in this video. And then we'll do some examples in the next video. So, what is it? Well, essentially, any integer, any positive integer greater than 1, okay, so we're not including 1 here, we're saying can be written as a product of its prime factors. So uh, we're looking for prime numbers that are factors of the integer in question. And there is a unique way, so there's one way, of multiplying those prime factors together to make our target number. Okay, so uh, if you've got uh, 2 times 3 times 5, for example, 2, 3, and 5, they are all prime numbers. It is a product of prime numbers, 2 times 3 times 5. Now, 2 times 3 times 5, uh, we're not saying is any different to 3 times 5 times 2. Okay, so you can rearrange them to your heart's content, but there are no other prime factors uh, or prime numbers, indeed, that would make the same valued product, okay? So, that is essentially what we're trying to do. So, prime numbers are an important part of this. So, you need to know your prime numbers. Now, in the majority of cases that you're going to deal with, uh, for prime numbers, you prob you're probably going to be looking at utilising the first five or six, now, you need to practice your prime numbers anyway, so this is a really good opportunity to practice writing down the first uh, five or six prime numbers. So let's go with six. Um, so the first prime number is two, then we've got three, I won't have the comma, so two, three, then we go to five, then seven, then eleven, then the next one is thirteen. So there are the first six prime numbers, okay? So, let's look at an example of how we're going to do this. So, we're going to look at the number 18, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my number here, 18, by the first prime number in my list, okay? Now, if it can't be divided by that, because we're not interested in decimals, so it's got to go in cleanly, no remainder, if it can't be divided by 2, then I work to the next number in the list, so 3. If it can't be divided by 3, then I go to the next number in my list, 5. Okay? So I work my way down the prime number list until I find one that cleanly goes into my target number. Okay? So, let's just kick this off. So 18. Can 2 go into 18? Yes. So 2 goes into 18 9 times. So underneath 18, I'm going to write 2 and 9. These are being multiplied together to make the number above. OK? 2 is a prime number, and I am going to circle any prime numbers that come out from this. So this is what I currently have. Now, the number here that is uncircled, because 9 is not a prime number, I do again, when I work my way through my list, okay, in the same way. So I go, okay, now does 2 go into 9? No, it doesn't. So 2's off, I go down the list. Does 3 go into 9? Oh, yes, it does. It goes in 3 times. So 3 times 3 makes 9. Circle your prime numbers. Well, both of those are prime. And once you're... You've got to all of your numbers here, circled, then you are done. Okay, so I don't need to go any further. So the key idea here is that 18 can be written as 
the product, so multiplying these circled numbers together. So 2 times 3 times 3. But rather than writing it as 2 times 3 times 3, we're going to write it as 2 times 3 squared. Because you can imagine that if you had something that was 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 5, you know, it would, it would be really long and horrible to work with. So instead, we will be using powers here. OK, let's see another example. How about uh, 40? So let's do the same trick with 40. Now, does 2 go into 40? Yes, yes it does. It goes in 20 times. So 2 is prime, so I circle the 2. 20 is not prime. So I go to the top of my list and I go, right, does 2 go into 20? Yes. 2 goes into 20 10 times. So I circle the 2, 10 is not prime. Now does 2 go into 10? Yes it does. It goes in 5 times. So 2 is prime and 5 is prime actually. Okay. So 40 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. But we don't want to write it like that, we want to write that as 2 cubed times by 5. Okay, and so that is writing an integer as the product of its prime factors. Okay, what we are drawing here is often referred to as a prime factorization tree or a prime factor tree. Okay, uh, but it is a neat way of being able to visualize and work out uh, your prime factors and then you multiply the circled ones together at the end and then write it in this form uh, using powers.